All right, everyone, thank you for joining. Um, today I have, I'll go over it in a little bit, but we're talking about database backup strategies. So we'll get going right now. All right, so we have today's pre uh, presenters. If you joined before, I'm sure you've seen Jeff plenty of times. You got Jeff Hunter over here. Um, Bill England is joining us today to go over uh, some scenarios we're going to walk through for backup. And then myself, Nick Stefano, I'm the senior product marketing manager here at Ninja One. Uh, backup is one of my products, so that's why I'm hopping on here. So we're going to walk through a few different items for you guys today. So the first thing is, you know, what to know about database backups, some questions to ask, information to know before you start going. Um, Jeff and Bill will give a discussion and a walkthrough of that, about three uh, scenarios we're going to go through. I'll give a quick little review, best practice bullets um, to wrap up, and then we'll do an interactive Q&A uh, towards the end. Now, the only question I ask for you guys is if you do have any uh, questions specifically, if you can go ahead and make sure you okay. add them into the Q&A section here, um, and then that's where we'll be pulling most of the questions from as we get towards the end. Um, but we'll kick it off uh, right now, and we'll go over to what to know about database backups. So uh, two real main sections here, right? So one is what to know and the other is what to ask. So key information to know about your databases. Uh, the first one is going to be, um, is your database VSS aware? Is it non-VSS aware? Or does it have an internal backup function? Um, we're gonna go over these three because these are the three scenarios that Jeff and Bill will be walking us through. And it covers most scenarios uh, out there for database backups. The second is how granular uh, you must be with your database backups. Um, this is more so you know um, if you need to restore little bits and pieces of a database, or if you are okay with taking a full you know, point in time snapshot of an entire database uh, when you're doing it. And third is what backup schedule do you need for your database backups? Uh, this can be set up in a few different ways. Um, and this also ties into some of the key questions I'm gonna go over in a bit. Uh, as well as some scenarios that Jeff and Bill will go over um, a little farther on down. So the second uh, part is key questions to ask about your databases. First one here is always, what is your vendor's recommended backup features, right? So uh, this ties into, um, or you know, how would uh, your specific vendor recommend you start backups of your database? This is always a great place to start, a good base level, um, and it should kind of help you uh, go through some of the other potential uh, scenarios we're going through today. The second one here is, does your database have its own way to back itself up? That ties into some of the information we just reviewed, such as granularity, scheduling, and some best practices that will be reviewed towards the end. And the third one is, is your application VSS aware? So there are some instances where the database itself that your application is using is VSS aware, but the application itself may not be VSS aware, uh, which will lead you towards some of the other scenarios we'll discuss going forward. All right, so with that, I will hand it over to J Jeff to review the first couple of scenarios. Thank you very much, Nick. And for our first scenario, we're going to be covering backing up Microsoft SQL. Uh, now, thankfully, Microsoft makes this very easy because they have VSS or the volume shadow copy service which allows us to back up files that are actively in use uh, safely. Uh, and so because Microsoft SQL supports VSS, we'll talk about how Ninja One, which is VSS aware, is able to back up those files uh, in their current state. Uh, we'll walk through the process of how we've set that up. We'll talk about an alternate option using the command line to generate a separate backup file as well. And then how we can actually go through and perform this restoration on a SQL database in order to get it back up and running uh, fast. And then after that, we're gonna switch gears and go into scenario two. And in scenario two, we're doing the exact opposite approach, which is going to be uh, backing up a non VSS aware database. Uh, and so, We'll cover those two scenarios. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen right now. And hopefully you can see my Ninja window right here. Move the video out of the way. Uh, so for starters, what we have right here is a machine that we are backing up using Ninja Backup. 
Uh, now on this machine, I have Microsoft SQL Server running. Uh, like I said, Microsoft SQL uh, does support VSS, meaning that we can back up the files in their current state at the time that we perform the backup safely. Uh, so this could be done with both an image or a file and folder backup. Uh, if we go into our policy overrides for this particular machine, we can go down to backups on the left-hand side here, and you'll see all the various backups that we have here. Uh, obviously, in practicality and production, you probably have fewer than this, but for demonstration purposes, we have a couple different ones here. Uh, now, for starters, I'm going to look at the image backup that we're taking right here. Uh, this is the entire image of the disk. It's being backed up on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5 o'clock, and it is being stored in the cloud. Uh, now, because this is being stored in the cloud, it means that we have the ability to actually mount that image in the cloud and pull individual files and folders out of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that would look like. We'll close out of our policy settings. We'll go to our backup tab here, and then we'll go down to manage. And once we go into the backup manager, we're able to actually see all those backup plans that we saw in the policy settings, including the critical server image backup right here. Uh, I'll see the various partitions that I have on this device. In this case, I'm interested in the C drive. I will click into that. I'll see when we last backed up. This was from this morning. And then when I click on that restore point, I actually have the ability to mount the image in the cloud. Uh, now, if I had multiple restore points already in this backup plan, I would have the ability to mount them all independently, uh, which gives me the granularity to choose which exact restore point I want to pull from. Do I want something that's very recent from today, uh, less likely, but still possible. I might want something that's from a little bit uh, further back, maybe from last week, maybe from two weeks ago. Um, so if I happen to have that need, I, I do have that flexibility. And so in this case, I'll go ahead and mount that image nice and quick. We are in the actual uh, image of the server that we backed up. And if I go into my program files here, into Microsoft SQL Server, into SQL Express here, I will see my data files here. These are my MDF and my LDF uh, files. These are the, the what my database is actually being stored on. Now, again, because SQL is Microsoft SQL, I'll say, is uh, VSS aware, I know that I, I have high confidence that these are going to be good files that I can use to facilitate my restore process. And so let's say I wanted everything. I can back up a little bit. I can check the box next to the particular folder that I have here, and then I can actually download this to my own machine. I could restore it to this same machine or to another device if my current uh, file server here was non-operable. And so I have plenty of flexibility there. Uh, and right there, doing nothing else, setting up an image backup on a SQL server, you have it being backed up in its current state at the time that we perform the backup. I would call this a, a crash consistent backup. That's the same as if somebody had pulled the plug on the server when we were actually you know, physically at the location. Uh, so this is great, but I would term this as the bare minimum. You know, this is the absolute bare minimum that you need to do in order to get the files backed up in the cloud so that you can safely restore them. There's more we can do to make this, I think, an, an easier and a more seamless process. Uh, and that would be by actually using the native SQL backup utility built into Microsoft SQL. Uh, now, the good news about that is that it is accessible via the command line. So I do have the ability to actually trigger a SQL backup to be created independently of me having to do any direct action. I can automate it by using a prescript. And so let's go back into our settings for this device. We'll again, look at our policy overrides on this device and our backup plans. But this time, instead of looking at our critical server image, we're looking at our SQL backups down here. And so if we click on that, we can see that this is a very similar type of flow here. It's being backed up daily at five o'clock. Now, one thing I'll note here is that you may need to back up more frequently. Uh, and so in the event that you do need to back up, let's say every couple of hours, every hour, uh, we can go ahead and modify this. And instead of doing something that's a, a sort of a, a longer cadence of daily, weekly, or monthly, we can actually do every couple of hours or even every couple of minutes. Uh, now, of course, you need to take the size of your backup into account here, a very large SQL database running every couple of minutes. It's probably never gonna catch up. You'll just always be backing up. Uh, but in this case, I could go ahead and say, well, I want to back up every single hour. Um, now, in this case, I'm doing a file and folder plan. Now, I could still directly target the uh, data files inside of the program files directory for Microsoft SQL if I wanted to. 
uh, and I would have a smaller backup that wasn't a full image, but I still would have the same capability to back up those files we saw earlier. But again, to make this an easier, more streamlined process, I'm just going to use a PowerShell script that runs as a prescript right here to actually make a backup of the, uh, uh, the SQL database. And so that'll be a natively generated SQL backup from Microsoft SQL that I can then easily restore. Uh, now, keep in mind here that I am running this script as an administrator. I have input my administrator credentials uh, when I use this as normal system. The current permissions of the system uh, did not let me back it up that way. So just as a note here, uh, if you do want to leverage this, there's a good chance you're going to need to provide administrator level credentials in order to back this up because it doesn't seem like system can do it out of the box. Now, what am I using for this particular script here? Let me drag over this tab. Uh, this is not something that I created. This is actually from a Ninja customer. Uh, this is from uh, Aaron Stevenson. Uh, and he posted this on the dojo a while back and has a current version on his GitHub. And so I'm going to go ahead and drop this into the chat here in case anybody would like to utilize that. Uh, as a note here, uh, all the, the recording, of course, will be sent out to everybody who's watching this uh, right now uh, or anybody who registered. And we'll also include a link dump of some of the things we're talking about today. Uh, so this script right here will be posted uh, or it may be available. Uh, so. Yeah, definitely uh, something I would recommend looking into if you have a need to create these SQL backup files. So I'm running that script. Uh, now, this is a simple SQL database, uh, which means that the log truncation happens automatically. Uh, so I don't need to have any additional steps to uh, pull the logs separately from the backup that I'm creating here. Uh, but if you did have a database, a SQL database that was not in a simple mode, uh, you would need to modify the script that I just showed here slightly. I think there's one line you need to add in PowerShell to separately back up the transaction logs uh, to make sure that you have everything that you need in your backup. Uh, so now I'm, I have this running on a recurring basis, maybe every hour it's backing up the SQL database, and then it's actually backing up the backup file itself. Uh, you can see in my folder section here that all I am backing up as a part of this backup is the actual backup directory, which is where these are natively stored uh, in, Microsoft, in Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, and so this is a very small backup. It's backing up literally one directory. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually take a look at what this might look like in practice. Uh, so we'll again go back up into our backup manager. We'll view all the various backups we have. We'll take a look at our SQL backup right here. You can see again, very small, very targeted. It's just the directory that we need for our SQL backups. And within it, I can see a variety of uh, backup files that I have. Uh, now, in my case, this is just a test SQL database, and so I'm using the AdventureWorks database from Microsoft. Uh, this is something that you can actually download from GitHub as well, from Microsoft's GitHub. Uh, it's just sort of a sample database to, to help people who aren't very familiar with SQL get started, or people like me who don't actually have a SQL database to pull from. Uh, and so right there, I can pull that particular file there. Uh, and then if we go into uh, here, I have two options, one to download the backup to my machine, but that's not really doing anybody any good. I would then have to then separately transfer from my machine to the destination machine, uh, which is why I really like the restore option here. Uh, the restore option gives you the ability to select which revision you'd like. Now, of course, I might wanna choose, uh, if I had a longer tail here on my backups, I would have more options to choose from. But in this case, I'm pulling from what I created this morning. I'm going to restore to a different location. I don't wanna restore to the same location. I actually wanna restore to the exact same device uh, and I'll restore to the desktop. So let's go ahead and find my administrator desktop. Right there. And then we'll go ahead and we'll restore the file. This is fairly small, so this should go pretty quickly. I think it's only a couple megabytes. Yeah, seven megabytes it looks like. And so we'll go through this restore process. You can see nice and snappy there. Uh, I will freely concede here that this is a small SQL backup just for demonstration purposes. I imagine anybody who's backing up SQL databases uh, in the field today, this is going to take a little bit longer because the file sizes will be larger. So we can go ahead and close out of there. And then I actually am going to open up Ninja Remote. 
Now, I will say you probably could automate this using PowerShell. Uh, once you actually restore the file to the device, uh, you could probably go ahead and automate the capability to uh, restore the database completely remotely without having to actually remote into the machine. But for, uh, let's say, visual simplicity here, uh, I'll go ahead and kind of show what this process looks like. Uh, for starters, right here, I can see the actual backup file. So this is what I just restored from my cloud backup to the desktop of this particular machine. And if I go down here, I already have SQL uh, Management Studio open. Uh, and to restore it, it is incredibly simple. Uh, you just need to right click on your databases there. You can restore the database. We can select the device right here. That's a little confusing there, but really when you say you're restoring from a device, you're just saying a file on a device. Uh, you could optionally do this from like a cloud link, but that seems kind of unnecessary given the tools that Ninja gives you to make this easier. Uh, and so we can go ahead and back up a file here or restore from our backup. Uh, and so I actually don't want what's in program files. Let's say that is theoretically corrupt. I'm going to go ahead and pull from the desktop right here. There's administrator. Of course, it's not letting me use it. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and use the original one there because it does not want to let me into the administrator directory for some reason. Yeah, live demos, ain't nothing like it. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and we'll use the backup here that was originally created. Uh, sorry for the, the, uh, the, the little hiccup there. But we'll go ahead and restore from our backup here. We'll hit okay. And we'll complete the backup. And there we go, we're done. Uh, you can see that that makes it very easy. Now, alternatively, if we, let's say, did not do the separate command line options to generate the separate backup, we could go and restore files and file groups, I believe, and kind of uh, use the MDF and the LDF files separately. But I just like this. It's nice and seamless. Uh, it's all in one. Uh, so it seems like it's a much easier part of the restoration process without having to manage all the MDF and the LDF files separately. But again, I'll certainly can see that there might be scenarios where you uh, need that level of granularity. And so you can have it both ways. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and switch gears here. We've been talking about Microsoft SQL and the great thing about it is that it has VSS support. Um, now to kind of circle back to what Nick talked about earlier, uh, he mentioned that you could certainly be using an application that is using Microsoft SQL Server under the hood. Uh, but is white labeled or otherwise has an application sort of on top of it. Uh, and so you do need to ensure that even if your application is using uh, Microsoft SQL Server under the hood, that the application itself is VSS aware in the event that you are going to kind of just a backup database itself and not necessarily the uh, generate the backup file. So just something to keep in mind there. Now we'll shift gears and we'll talk about MySQL. Uh, now again, a concession to reality. I understand most people are probably using MySQL on a Linux server, uh, but in this case, we're doing a Windows demonstration here. So we're showing MySQL actually running on a Windows device. Uh, now our philosophy here is going to be slightly different. Uh, we are still going to leverage a script. Uh, and so this script right here is something that I ginned up. Uh, this is uh, going to use MySQL dump, which is a ability that is built into uh, MySQL to actually generate the backup uh, that we need. Uh, so in this case, MySQL, it is not VSS aware. So I'm not going to have the easy ability to just back up the database as it is. It's going to be better and safer for me to actually generate a backup file using the command line option right here. Uh, now, a couple of notes on this script here. I have hard-coded the name of the database into my actual script, which is maybe not necessarily what you want to do. Uh, I have also coded in the backup path where these are going to be stored. It's just a folder that I created on the particular machine. I then have all my names here. I am adding in, the, uh, I think, the time. No, actually, never mind. That's a different script. Uh, and I'm testing to make sure this path actually exists here. Uh, and then right here, this is another thing that I would recommend maybe a change on. 
Uh, I did put the credentials for my database actually in plain text into this script, which I wouldn't recommend for anybody. Uh, so I would actually probably modify this script to instead use Ninja's secure custom fields to retain the username and the password uh, so that I can have that all uh, stored securely without having to have these exposed within plain text. Uh, so definitely eat your vegetables, even if I didn't in this particular case. And so we'll come back into our SQL uh, server here. We'll go into our policy overrides, and then we'll go into our backups again. In this case, we have a separate uh, plan here that's being ran every 12 hours for our MySQL backups. And if we go into our folders here, you can see that we're explicitly including the DB hyphen backups folder, which is where we're actually storing all these backup files. Now, one thing you'll note here is that I am not running this as a prescript. Uh, so how are these backups getting generated? Uh, in our first example with Microsoft SQL Server, we were having the backup generated immediately prior to the backup, which, gave, which, which would give us a backup file uh, as close to the point in time that the actual backup was performed as possible. And so in this particular case, I'm not doing that. Therefore, we need to have some kind of mechanism to ensure that we're generating this backup file on a regular basis. And so if I close out here and then go into my scheduled automations, you'll see that I actually have a separate script running here. Now, why am I doing this? Uh, this is really just to show you the flexibility that you have with scheduling these internal backups from the, the database itself, uh, where I'm actually having this generated every 20 minutes. And so what this means is I'm generating these backup files, multiple backup files into a directory that I am then backing up with Ninja Backup. So I'm actually running the backup less frequently, but the backups are being generated locally on the device by this script more often, which means that when I go to restore, I'm going to have additional restore points on a every 20 minutes basis. So I just have additional granularity and additional flexibility with what, what exact point in time I want the backup from. Uh, so again, what does this look like in practice? Uh, we will come back into our device here and we will go into our backups. We'll go into manage backups here. We'll go down to the MySQL backups that we created. There I have a variety of options here. What I really care about is the DB backups folder that we can see right here. And here I can actually see all the backups that have been occurring uh, on this device. So this is all initiated by that separate script there. Uh, they are all going into this particular uh, folder here, and then I'm able to back up this folder. And now, of course, I could certainly modify this script that we saw earlier to actually truncate uh, and only leave a certain number of copies present in that folder to conserve space over. Be a very good idea just from a storage management perspective. So now uh, I can go ahead and restore the, uh, let's say I pick this one right here. We can again do the restoration. I can decide the revision that I wanna have here. If I wanna overwrite any potential file name conflicts. Uh, again, we could restore to this exact same device, but in theory, let's say that this was a non-operable device. It's not a device that we can actually respond to right now because it's not online. Uh, but there's information, there's critical information in the MySQL database that we need to get uh, to the customer so that they continue operation. Maybe it's credit card transaction logs, something of that nature, although that's probably an outdated example. Uh, and so what we can do here is uh, Uh, it's just a very great option in the moment uh, to restore to another device uh, that also has backup enabled. Uh, so what we'll do in this particular case here is we're going to restore to the exact same device. McGlutton for punishment here. We're going to go ahead and try to restore to the desktop again and see if it works better this time. And there we go. Uh, note here that I'm not personally using NTFS permissions in this environment have that option there if you uh, uh, need that as a part of your at my window here I think this is there we go it's continuing the restore job right here uh, I did see somebody say that I am freezing uh, Hopefully you can still hear me right now. I will say that I am in Florida where we have not had any rain in probably over a month and a thunderstorm rolled in about five minutes before this webinar started. So if I drop, it's nothing personal. 
right there with you, Jeff. <laughs> at my window. <laughs> And so here we can see that we have our database file. It got restored. Uh, and then we can go ahead and continue through the MySQL restore process. Uh, this is very easy. I think you just need to open up the SQL database inside the zip here. Go ahead and extract that like so. Uh, and then this actually will just go ahead and create a new SQL database when you run it inside of MySQL. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and do the uh, full restore process here just in the interest of time. I think I'm going a little bit long here. Uh, so that is the whole process there. Uh, I am going to paste this script into the chat as well. But again, all the resources that we show here today, uh, this is going to be sent out in the email that we send out with the recording uh, probably sometime tomorrow. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Nick. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jeff. All right, so going into the last scenario here that I'll hand over to uh, to Bill to bring us home is backing up databases with internal backup options like QuickBooks. So Bill, if you wanna run through some quick steps and then if you wanna take over, go ahead. Um, okay. And as a quick thing, I've been seeing everyone's questions in the chat and uh, the Q&A section. Once Bill wraps up here, we'll go through a recap and best practices uh, and then we'll start answering some of the questions you guys have in there. So. Just as a heads up, I have been monitoring, but I'll hand it over to Bill uh, to take it over. Thanks, Bill. All right, fantastic. Yeah, uh, with what I'm going to be talking about, uh, QuickBooks has come up a lot in questions, especially with our backup. Can we back it up? Can we restore it? And so forth. Uh, the answer to that question is yes, we can when we combine our backup strategies with built-in QuickBook backup utilities. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen right quick like and get over to my QuickBooks so we can run through a couple of things. Uh, of course, this is going to stop your sharing for a minute there, Nick. Three. Okay, so what we're looking at right now is, of course, this is my Ninja screen. So we'll back out of this for just a second. And this is a version or a trial version of QuickBooks Desktop Edition 2024. And let's see, hopefully my Zoom don't crash on me again. But um, as far as within QuickBooks itself, uh, along with most any of the other programs that are not VSS aware, but database uh, utilities such as QuickBooks, the best scenario for this is if you go in and set up your backups. So I uh, see that's the online, create a local backup. And with this right here, we're going to create a local backup. And we're going to actually just create a schedule for it. And I've already got one set up right here. So it doesn't have a scheduled time within itself. And we're going to back everything up to a folder I've got identified as eBackup. And that is now done as far as everything in QuickBooks. So we can go in and run this backup at any point in time. It performs its own backup, it saves everything, and it puts everything into a format that can be restored simple enough. So let's, um, we've got QuickBooks up and running. Now, one thing to remember, especially about QuickBooks, is if you are inside of the application itself and you try to run a file and folder backup, the backup will fail because QuickBooks has exclusive rights to its database and will not let anything else touch it. Now, if you set up an image backup, it will back that database up to what it looked like at that point in time. But when you go to open it back up, you're gonna to have to do a repair on the database because it's going to look as if the, uh, your system crashed and it would be the same scenario in that. So what I'm going to do here is I have already created a backup plan for a file and folder backup. The QuickBooks local, which is the same thing that pretty much everything that you're looking here is gonna be similar to whether you're doing a SQL server, MySQL, as far as the backups go. Um, I'm not doing any automation or anything on this yet. I'm backing all of this up to the cloud. 
and I've gone through and I've included the folder E colon backups. Uh, there's nothing fancy or anything like that that's taking place. And we'll just save that. So this backup is now ready to run. Let's close out of here. And if we say run this backup plan, all right, backup folder local. Well, one thing I'm going to do prior to that is I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm going to go ahead and initiate a backup that's going to call the Windows scheduled task, which will then run the backup that we have configured within QuickBooks. So let's go down here, my QuickBook backup, which is just a simple batch file. And when we say run it, yep, you're going to see this pop up on the device. So this just made a call into QuickBooks and said, okay, let's run the backup that we've created internally. And this won't take but just a minute for this to complete. Like I said, I'm same as uh, Jeff. I'm just using a sample database from within QuickBook. Okay, the backup is now completed. So we're going to run this backup plan. And like I said, this won't take but just a moment to complete as well. Now, right now I'm just doing everything manually, but the process with the scheduled task can be set up the same as the way Jeff had would showed you in his demo to where you can say, okay, I want this uh, QuickBooks local backup to run every hour, every two hours, every three hours. And then you can schedule your backups or quarterly around that as well. And you won't have any failures or interference from QuickBooks because you're backing up the backup file which that way doing that is the recommended way, uh, especially from QuickBooks itself to ensure the backup you're restoring is a successful backup. All right, so as you can see right here, this backup job is completed. Do a refresh, that'll go away. So now if we want to restore this. Uh, if we go the same thing into manage, our quick backups local, here's the backup itself. And here are all of the backups that I've been playing with so far on this. So I can restore this backup back to any point in time. Uh, we'll just go back to uh, the latest revision. We'll just grab this one right here. And we are going to just download this one. And this is just going to download it to my download file folder on the server, which is fine. And if you could see right up here, that backup is now done, or that restore is done. And we jump back over into QuickBooks file using their software and their utility. We're going to open slash restore a backup copy. And it was a local backup. Let's go over to the uh, downloads folder and 1134 here is the backup that we just restored open next we're restoring it back into the original location there replace it yes three two one come on is waiting on QuickBooks now and type in yes to confirm that although I said I wanted to do it, we're going to make really, really sure based on QuickBook that is what you wanted to do. And voila, we have just now, as soon as the spinning wheel stops, we'll get the screens back and we have just restored our QuickBooks database. And that, in a nutshell, is the recommended procedure, like I said, based on what we do at Ninja Backup and in, in coordination with back QuickBooks themselves on how to correctly backup and restore. 
Now, one of the things that I did mention earlier was if you have an image backup, you can still restore that file, but uh, you will get prompted if you restore uh, just uh, straight from an image backup while the application is up and running, you'll get prompted that you need to do a repair on your backup file. So you say yes on the repair, it runs through it and your database opens back up. So from this point, it's actually a, a pretty simple and straightforward. And that's what I have as far as for the uh, QuickBook backups and everything. So I'm going to turn everything back over to Nick. Awesome, thanks so much, Bill. All right, we'll do a quick little recap and then uh, we can jump into some q and I saw Jeff has been answering some questions as well. Um, so Bill, if you wanna jump through two, feel free as I go through this little recap and then uh, we can open it up. So just as a quick recap and best practices here, um, just to review what we spoke about, we have scenario one that Jeff reviewed, which was backing up a VSS aware database, such as SQL, you know, easiest and most straightforward out of the scenarios that we showed, uh, you can use file and folder or image backups to do so. Scenario number two, backing up non VSS aware databases, such as MySQL, Jeff also went over as well. Uh, best practice here, use, uh, pre-scripts, pre-automations and command line options, um, for that. And then scenario number three that Bill just went over with us was backing up databases with internal backup options, such as QuickBooks. Um, again, you know, point there, use internal backup options first, then image or file and folder backup after. Again, kind of the best practice way for QuickBooks there. Now with that, we'll open up uh, to the Q&A section. So I don't know, Jeff, if you want to hop yeah. in and just go over some of the ones that you already answered. Absolutely. Yeah, there's already been some great questions in the q and I'll just highlight a few of them because I think it's it's valuable and, and uh, helps clear up some confusion that there might have been from my presentation. <laughs> uh, so uh, Donovan had a question. If the PowerShell, PowerShell script is not successful for any reason, would Ninja report the backup process as a failure? Uh, and so if you're running a this as a pre-script, we saw this inside of the backup plan, you can actually run a pre-script immediately before and immediately after the backup job. Uh, the pre-script option does have the ability to cancel if the script fails for whatever reason. Uh, so a great example of this is that I originally set up that script to back up Microsoft SQL to run a system and my permissions on the device didn't allow the system user to access that DB and actually back it up. And so I got a failure. I uh, wasn't able to actually uh, back up the database uh, or I should, yeah, I wasn't able to back up the database. The script was unable to complete. It returned a failure and therefore we exited out of the backup process and that returned a failure indicator on the dashboard. Uh, that would of course trigger a failure indicator for Ninja One backup has failed as well uh, in case you wanted to generate a ticket or otherwise receive an alert. Uh, so when you are doing the pre-script, yes, that is going to have an impact on the success or failure of your backup with alerting purposes. Now, I also showed a different method of doing that, which was I had a separate scheduled automation running from my backup to actually generate the MySQL backups. Now, in the event that you do that, uh, obviously that script running independently doesn't have any interaction with the actual success or the failure of your backup. What you would need to do is have your script run separately, independently of the backup job, and then you would need a pre-script running with the backup job to essentially confirm that the timestamps of your backup files are within you know, a recent period of time that is acceptable to you. If you need backups from the most recent hour, then you want to go ahead and have your script say, hey, are all these backups from their most recent hour? Uh, if it is not, uh, maybe it's a day, you can, of course, change the time frame to meet with whatever you're, uh, you're dealing with. Uh, so yeah, two different caveats there. If you're running something as a pre-script, that is going to give you direct information on whether or not it, it succeeded or failed. If you're having scripts run independently of Ninja One Backup, you're going to need to use that pre-script to essentially you know, check and make sure the table is set uh, so that we're able to have a successful backup. Uh, 
Donovan had another question. What Windows user is this PowerShell script using? Uh, it depends. Uh, like I said, for backing up the Microsoft SQL database directly, I used admin credentials that I input in the credentials exchange of Ninja One. Uh, in the case of the MySQL database backups, that was just system. Uh, I did not have any permissions issues in place there. Uh, so I imagine that'll work fine uh, for MySQL. Depending on your permissions, system could also work fine, but you may need to access the administrator credentials uh, in order to make that work successfully. Check here, uh, I think. Uh, Levi had a question, does, Emma, uh, does MySQL dump lock the files and I Bill can confirm for, uh, this for me, uh, but I believe that when you use MySQL dump, it puts the DB into read-only mode while the um, uh, backup is actually being generated. So there would be right. a, a period of time there where, thank you, Bill, uh, there would be a period of time there where yeah, it would be in read-only mode. A couple other questions here that I saw in the chat that I wanted to go ahead and go over uh, is, uh, but Levi asked a question, what created the scheduled task to back up QuickBooks? Uh, and so that is actually a PowerShell script being ran within Ninja on the device to actually create the scheduled task locally on the device. Uh, so that's what created the scheduled task is that you actually initiated the script from within Ninja and then Ninja created the task locally on the device. Uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, go back to the q and I know there's a couple questions here uh, that are still open. Uh, so if you have any questions, please go ahead and drop those into the Q&A. Just easier for us to track versus the actual uh, chat itself. Um, Yeah, I'm scrolling through everything. Too. There's a and, lot in and, here. <laughs> and actually, if it's okay with you, Nick, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We'll actually kind of yeah, show yeah. some of this stuff live because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not always the most descriptive person. All right, so we're back in here. Uh, we had a question from Intralink. Uh, any way to consolidate backup reports from multiple clients into a single daily email report? And certainly, uh, if you're a managed service provider and you are managing multiple clients and you really care more about overall usage for everybody versus the uh, individual usage for a particular client, we can go ahead and create a report here. Uh, we can see that there are two different types of reports. In this particular case, we'd want to do a summary report. And right here, you can see the target type. Uh, if we did an organization-based report, this would mean that we're doing reports for specific organizations, companies uh, within Ninja. With a global report, uh, it is everybody. Uh, and so when we do this with a backup summary report here, let's say global backup, if I could type, that'd be great. There we go, global backup report. I can create that. And you can see here that this is going to uh, give me all the information that you would typically have within a backup report. It's just going to be uh, for everybody in your uh, Ninja environment, regardless of who they are as a customer. And then from there, you can, can have this scheduled out. Uh, let's say I save this like so. Uh, we can go ahead and close out, go to the reporting section, and then I can have that scheduled to be sent out. Uh, maybe daily might be a little much, but weekly, monthly, probably uh, a better way to, uh, to have that happen. Uh, Bill had a question. Can you please show how to obtain an older version of the backup? I'm only seeing the most recent revision in the UI. Uh, and that was because, uh, you know, we had a few technical difficulties here getting this set up. So I wasn't able to show a backup with a longer tail uh, to showcase that, but I can certainly sure. do that right now. Um, so, sorry, would you say, Bill? I said, sure, because I know on my, uh, like when I was doing my QuickBook testing, there's multiple revisions. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, definitely. So if you want, I can take it and share my screen there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, go for my it. Zoom. So let's. And and so Bill, just to uh, sorry, not you, Bill, Bill, Bill Riley in the in the in the uh, in the chat. Oh, okay. I thought you were um, talking to me just a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know that's the too many bills uh, on the on this webinar, uh, but yeah, just to sort of set Bill's uh, question here, Bill Riley's question, uh, he just wanted to see how we had um, how we can restore multiple revisions from further back in time, and and Bill England is going to go ahead and show us that right now.
And uh, <laughs> there, Bill's back. Okay, can you guys still see my screen share going on? Okay. We cannot. Yeah, you'll have to reshare your screen, but you're you're here and we can hear you. Okay, so let's reshare screen back out there again. Zoom. You gotta love it, right? Okay. Wow. If I can figure out. Okay, so there we go. All right. Are you able to see everything again now? Yeah, you're good to go. Okay, perfect. So, for instance, on this particular backup that I've got going on, eBackups, as you can see, I've got multiple files that have been backed up. Now, uh, to answer the question, if you wanted to restore every one of these backups back down to a device, uh, simple. We'll just select them all. <laughs> restore. Um, Everything from the latest right there, if it exists, we skip it. We'll restore it to another location. Uh, we'll just send it back to the same server here. Oh, look at there, there's a restores folder. You think I'd plan for this, huh? All right, so we're gonna select this folder to restore it back to and select restore. We're preparing the job. It'll take just a moment for this to run. Now, one thing to note on this as well, uh, with the backups, you can do a hybrid backup, local backup if you've got a local storage device or directly to the cloud. All right, so we're almost done here. And one of the things about this here too, that this comes in handy, especially when you're backing everything up to the cloud, in the event that someone completely um, deletes the directory that you've got all your local backups in, you've still got a copy and you can restore these back down to the cloud itself or from the cloud itself. So if we go back over here, let's get to the E drive and well, let's get back to the correct server here. There we go. And QuickBook restores. And as you can see right here, this is every single one of the backups that I have taken while setting all this up and doing the testing and everything. And then if you decide from QuickBooks that you want to go back to a certain date, everything is still the same. File, open restore company. We're going to restore a backup copy it's from a local backup. Let's go to this folder. Uh, and here is a listing of all of your backups that you have just restored back down. And can select, then you can select which one that you want to restore to easily enough. And then you just follow the normal QuickBook restore procedures. That is awesome. Thank you, Bill. A couple other questions that have started to come through in the Q&A. Uh, we had a question from Edward. Uh, he has some devices with OneDrive, Microsoft OneDrive. And so that's backing up the desktop and the documents and the pictures folder. Uh, Ninja One Backup does not seem to be backing up those files. Uh, and the question is, can Ninja Backup back up those files? Uh, and so I would say from my perspective that uh, we are not going to natively back those up uh, for a few different reasons. Uh, one is that we do exclude the directory where that is stored by default. Uh, now we also would exclude any files that are marked as offline files, which OneDrive or Dropbox or Box or any of these types of services, they're frequently going to mark these files as offline files if they're stored in the cloud. And so if the file isn't actually stored locally, uh, it is not going to be able to be accessed, of course, by Ninja Backup. So I'd say right there, those are two issues that kind of make that something that uh, is not necessarily easy to do. Uh, that being said, Bill, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. If we did you know, ex uh, include the directories where the files are being stored and we did take separate steps from Ninja Backup to ensure that the OneDrive files are marked as local files and not offline files, uh, should it in theory work? Sure. 
Uh, the answer to that question is, I, I don't want to sound ambiguous about it, but yes, no. Uh, like Jeff was saying, uh, we can back up with no problem any file that is local on that device. Now, when it comes to OneDrive files, you have a link to that file on the device. But can we back it up? Yeah, there are some caveats. There are some steps that need to be taken, like you need to go into your OneDrive configuration and say, okay, I want to change this from keeping it into the cloud to move everything local to the device so that it physically exists on that device. But I also synchronize everything up to the it's up to OneDrive that way. And then you can go into the if you're doing a file and folder backup, you can go into the advanced options, just type in OneDrive in the search and in, and disable all of the exclusions, which will then allow you to back up your OneDrive using Ninja Backup. The downside to that is, like I said, every one of those files has to physically reside on the device that you are backing up. And in a lot of computer setups today, a lot of the devices you get, they're pushing more and more and more to keep everything into the cloud. So you don't have as large of a local hard drive as you would have in the past. You know, so if you've got a 200 gig hard drive on that device, but you've got 500 gig of files stored in the cloud, you're going to fill your hard drive up before you get everything synchronized back down. Thank you very much, Bill. That's uh, very, very useful. Um, I'll do a speed round here since I know we're kind of coming towards the end here. A couple of questions. Harold had one that I thought uh, was very good to talk about. Um, he wanted to know if we were talking about backing up QuickBooks online or we were discussing the desktop version. I am assuming that you were doing the, the desktop hosted version of QuickBooks, right, Bill? Correct. That is correct. Okay. And I know, I, I know, I think I saw Harold say in the chat or earlier that potentially QuickBooks desktop is being sunset in some way. Um, so I'm unsure of that, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure if we would have anything for QuickBooks online at this particular juncture. Uh, no, right now at that point, if they did decide to phase out, that's like even with the desktop version, you still have the ability when you set the backups that if you subscribe to QuickBooks online backup service, then you could just back it up directly to their cloud. But with the online version, of course, all of that's cloud backup. And once that happens, if it's not physically located on that local device, then we cannot back it up. Yeah, and that kind of plays in very well um, with some of the other questions that we'll get to in a second. Uh, right here, we have a, a question from Cleon. Uh, is there a limit? Uh, to how much you can restore. Uh, no, what you can back up, you are able to freely and easily restore as a part of the Ninja One backup service. Uh, Dalton has a question. Can we restore to a computer that does not have Ninja One backup on it, or is that a prereq for restoration? Uh, and so the answer here is, I'll, I'll parse your words very literally here. In terms of restoring directly to the device, yes, we would need to have the Ninja One agent installed, and we would need to have Ninja One backup enabled in order to directly restore from the cloud uh, to that particular device. However, if you wanted it to download the files from the cloud backup to your own local machine and then separately you know, get them to the device, whether it has Ninja One backup on it or not, or the Ninja One agent on it or not, uh, you're able to absolutely do that. Uh, but the direct restoration to a device that is going to require the agent and then also to have backup enabled. Uh, Levi has a question, how can we back up Azure SQL? Uh, to my knowledge, I don't think we can because it would not have, uh, unless you're obviously running that on a, a VM, a, a supported Windows VM that we'd be able to back up from. If this is like a, a serverless uh, SQL database, we would not have a mechanism to back that up. Um, Mohammed has a question. Can we back up on our Azure storage? Uh, no, you cannot. Uh, cloud storage is licensed through Ninja, through AWS, so we do not support bringing your own storage. I will say something we haven't really spoken about yet today is local storage. We've kind of been in, talking entirely about the cloud, uh, but we do offer local network storage as well. So if you did want to back up to a NAS or some other file share on a server that's stored locally, you can absolutely do that. Um, and you know, 
that, that's, that's something you can easily do. Uh, but in terms of cloud storage, we only support AWS and it has to be licensed through Ninja. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bill Riley, I'll, I'll have to say his full <laughs> name now. Bill Riley had a question. Are these backups tiered becoming less frequent as they become older? And so right now, no, uh, that is not how they work right now. Uh, it is essentially just a purely based on your schedule and then how much data you want to retain. So if you're backing up, uh, you know, twice a week, you're going to be backing up twice a week. Um, we do have plans to change this. Uh, and so being able to kind of have more of that tiered backup uh, structure and say, I want to retain X number of backups or daily backups for this long, weekly backups for this long, monthly backups for this long, uh, that sort of tiered system. We are working on that. And I think, I don't think I'm overstepping too much to say that uh, that's something we'll have out at some point this year. Um, if I'm wrong on that, let me know. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's uh, definitely something that we are working towards. Uh, question from Ryan who is managing a frankly alarming number of SQL servers, uh, 7,000 SQL servers in here. Uh, he was asking about options for validating uh, files, essentially comparing against metadata. Uh, that's not something we support right now, but I think that is something that we're eventually working towards, but I don't have a firm time frame on when that might be available in the same way that the, uh, the improved retention and tiered backup structure um, is. Uh, so, so nothing on that on that quite yet. Um, and with that, I think we're at the time here where I'm going to pass it over to Nick so that we can have a very special guest come out. All right. Well, thank you for everyone who, uh, stuck around. We are actually have a webinar prize giveaway. So Andrew, if you want to pop out from backstage and, uh, choose the winner, winner. please do so. Hey everyone. First off, I would like to appreciate that I am apparently a special guest. Wow, thank you, Jeff. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. I'm Andrew. I'm a marketing programs coordinator at Ninja, and I'm here to announce the prize winner of today's webinar. Um, the winner will be able to choose between a $300 Amazon gift card, a Yeti cooler, a BO lit, um, 20 wireless Bluetooth speaker, or a desk, but not just any desk, a very desk pro plus 36. And the winner of today's webinar is Jeremy Shupik. Everyone drop a huge congratulations. Oh to that. Uh, Jeremy, please keep an eye out in the following days um, from an email to claim your prize, but back to y'all. All right. Thanks so much, Andrew. That will be it. Thank you for everyone for showing up. We appreciate it. Um, you know, we'll see if we can follow up with some of the questions we didn't get to today. So feel free um, to reach out. If not, we will see what we can do about making sure uh, any remaining questions are answered. But with that, I just want to say thank you again for showing up. Appreciate it. And enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Take care, everyone. See you Bye, guys. guys.